Okay, it is 7.10 a.m. Good morning, September 29th, 2017. All right, guys, so we're going to check out our latest progress with the disturbance chart. Uh, this is going to be a quick one for the morning. I'm going to have the entire weekend to look at this stuff for you guys and bring you more detailed updates, but I just wanted to touch base and give you the latest info we have. Now, if you notice, the uh, five-day percentage has dropped from 50 to 40, but the 48-hour has risen from 30 to 40. Now what that means is that they believe that in the next two days that this storm has a higher chance of forming uh, rather than anything after that and that is because of shear winds. We do have some winds that are going to be coming in and hopefully influencing this storm. The only issue is is if it forms first then the shear winds might not have that much of an effect. But again guys um, I don't see this formation here being really the significant one we need to look out for. I think what's coming off of Africa right now is a big deal, and then the storm that is forming underneath this one is a big deal. I'm not saying that this won't be a big deal. This may f blow into a full-blown hurricane, but I just want to show you some things. Really quick, they have some track models for this storm, which would be neat if it turns into a... Uh, tropical storm. Tropical depressions don't get names, the tropical storms do, but they still have spaghetti models. They think it's going to form right under the southern tip of Florida, basically parallel with the Bahamas in a way, uh, to the north side of Cuba. And as of right now, they think it's going to pass right through the center of mid-Florida, maybe get off into the Atlantic Ocean here, and then make a left turn into the Gulf. So that's why we need to watch this thing. If it does make it into the ocean here, anytime it's in water, it has the potential of growing. So that's why we're watching this. These, this uh, sharp left turn has to do with uh, high winds they're talking about. So if this storm doesn't form by the time this influence that's pushing it to the left comes, chances are it may eat it up and may not become anything. Uh, regardless, Florida is going to get water and uh, uh, rain, rather, rain and wind from this, um, whether it's a system that forms into a tropical depression or not. So they will be getting influenced by this storm. Um, here are the current... Uh, this is the uh, lower grade radar I use. Um, it just loads quicker. It's not as detailed, but we can clearly see all the action going on here, guys. There's just a lot of storms in this area. We have our counterclockwise motion here, and also over here, you can almost see this formation here that I'm talking about by the Cape Verde Islands. I'm very concerned about this. It's showing a lot of spin, a lot of counterclockwise roll. They haven't put a percentage on it just yet. I do think that's going to change. I really think they're going to recognize this area here. Even though this time of year they're not supposed to be forming over here, it does happen. Also, there's a high density area here by the Cape Verde Islands and the Leeward Islands. And then again, guys, underneath this system that has the 40% chance of 48 hours is another one. And this is what I was pointing at to be Ophelia, because if this was neat, the next letter is O, and then we have Felipe. Uh, but again, it all depends on which ones turn into tropical storms first. Again, this is the animated model. I want to show you my concern is right here. This is beginning to buckle and spin in a counterclockwise motion. If you can see it, there it goes right there. It starts to buckle, and that's what we look for. When you, when you start seeing that counterclockwise spin with these storms, that's when you look for the tropical depression uh, tags and stuff like that. So we may see a 10% chance on this. I thought maybe they would have it even this morning. But it looks like they're really putting all their focus into the Caribbean, which we should be too. Guys, don't get me wrong. The Caribbean is going to produce a lot of storms in the next couple weeks. It's just, it's just there's really no, almost no way around it at this point. The conditions are just too, too good for these storms to not form. And I'm going to show you a couple on the charts here. All right, guys, here it is. This is Tropical Tidbits. I have you pulled up to the frame I wanted you to see. This is the Canadian model. Um, once again, they're not that good with the paths of storms in prediction, but they are very, very accurate with storms forming. Now, look at this. There's actually two hurricanes that were forming in the, Adla or the Pacific Ocean here, back-to-back, -back, and then pulling a Fujiwara effect. We are going to take a look into that, but nonetheless, they show this storm here. They show another low forming uh, right below Cuba. They show yet another low on top of Cuba, and then two more systems, one closer to Bermuda and one up to the north, parallel with the northeast, probably getting pulled up in the jet stream. But guys, this developed just over the past couple hours, and then here is more low coming off of the uh, West African coast. This is very important, guys. Just the point that we're getting all this action is what we need to look out for. I'm going to back up here and show you a little bit how these form, and then we're going to look at Ventu Sky. 
I'm also going to show you the GFS version of this. Uh, here's Maria and Lee pulling out. Here's that front that's going to be sitting over the northeast for a while, bringing a lot of rain, possibly snow to some areas, believe it or not. There is that formation. They believe that was going to be Nate if it does develop with a name. This is the area I'm watching off the west coast of Africa. And then we have this system that develops in the middle of the Atlantic, guys, coming off the east coast of the U.S. and then forming into a system right over Bermuda once it hits that warmer water. And then look at this, guys. We almost get two different systems coming off of West Africa and then not... Remember yesterday, it came up into the middle of the Atlantic here, and now the models are showing it going all the way through the Lesser Antilles Islands. Check that out, guys. This thing, this whole, this entire path has shifted here. Now, again, this is why I say the Canadian model isn't that good with the paths. They shift so much, but they are good with the development of storms. That's why I use the Canadian model. And then clearly you can see this is one, two, three, four, five systems, and then a six down here, guys. This is six low systems all by October 7th. That is eight days from now. This is very significant to watch, guys. Any of you that are following this stuff closely, you need to keep an eye on this. And also the GFS is beginning to copy this, and they're beginning to agree with the, with the CMC models. And I'm going to show you right here. Look, we got one right here, a significant hurricane by Florida. System here, system here, system here. And then you can see in the Pacific Ocean, major hurricane right there. I'm going to back up and show you how these form. Two hurricanes, look at this guys, one and two, both forming at the same time because of this area also. Some of this moisture is getting pulled into the Pacific Ocean and then in turn is causing uh, counterclockwise cyclones. And we have two hurricanes here. And then I'm going to move forward. One of the two moves into the Caribbean and then becomes a hurricane in the Atlantic. So it's a hurricane in the Pacific and then a storm in the Atlantic as well, if they get named. Remember that. They have to be named in order to be tropical storms. But there you go, guys. The GFS is a green. Hurricane in the Caribbean, hurricane to the east of the Bahamas, parallel with the southern tip of Florida, and then one, two, three more systems in the Atlantic. So all models are now beginning to agree that the Atlantic Ocean is going to have multiple systems at the same time. And this is where things get interesting, guys, because when we can't put all our focus on one storm, people begin to get a little crazy. They start to over-exaggerate. I'm not trying to do that. That's why I'm showing you step-by-step step how this stuff is happening. Now listen, I do have to get to work this morning. Um, I showed you all I wanted to show you except for Ventu Sky. Once again, here is the GFS. One, two, three, possibly a fourth, and then this is a fifth. And guys, we need to pay attention to the West African coast. It is still producing storms, and that's why I'm bringing this to you. There's been changes since last night. I have the wind turned up to 1,500 meters for wind direction. I'm not going by speed of the hurricanes at this moment. Once they turn into hurricanes and they become a threat, we will talk about speeds. But I'm just going to go through the dates really quick. Thursday the 28th, Maria and Lee moving out. Here's the 29th today. This is tomorrow the 30th. We begin to see our spin going on in the Caribbean. This is going to stay all month, guys. We're going to have a, counter, a counterclockwise spin going on in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean for the next three weeks. So anytime we have super storms forming, chances are they're going to turn into depressions, guys. That's, that's just the unfortunate part about it. It just looks to be that it's not going to avoid that situation. And now here's where I want you to watch but, uh, from Tuesday on. Here's Wednesday the 4th. Thursday the 5th, you begin to see our hurricanes forming in the uh, Pacific Ocean here. This one actually moves into the Caribbean. There's Friday the 6th, you see it crossing over Manga uh, Managua. <laughs> Sorry about that, it is very early. And here we go, system here, system here, and a third below it. And finally, Sunday the 8th, we have a developed system almost in the Gulf of Mexico, another one to the east of uh, the east coast of Florida and the Bahamas, and then one out to the middle of the Atlantic. I'll count this as one. And then a separate system, whether this did a loop or not, I'm not sure. Again, remember we saw Lee getting pulled off by the jet stream, then looping back into the Atlantic. I don't think that'll happen. But yet, guys, we have a very active ocean, uh, Pacific and Atlantic. We need to keep an eye on this stuff. I'm going to have a full detailed update this afternoon, guys. I hope you all have a great Friday. Let's keep an eye on this.